Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video I did on the SKR Mini install, I'll be getting the TFT35, uh, which is the touchscreen display, and doing a video installing that. So I got that here, it just came in the other day, so we're going to go ahead and walk through the install process. Uh, I'm going to break this into two videos. Uh, the first one's going to be uh, doing the physical installation and getting everything up and running with the default firmware, and then I'll do a separate video on how to update the firmware on this board if that's something you're interested in doing. Um, I think that most people will be okay with the default firmware, so that's kind of why I was splitting it out. But if you do want to get the latest or if you are having issues, um, walking through that process I think would uh, help some people out. So I'll just do that as a separate video and link to it from here. Alright guys, so before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. It will really help the channel grow. Uh, we're almost at 1500 subscribers, which is great. Alright, so first thing I want to talk about is the tools we're going to need. We're really just going to need a couple of um, Allen wrenches that we have here. Uh, standard sizes for um, this display area over here. And then for um, getting into where the main board is. Uh, but and that's really all we're going to need. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. I'll take a look to see what we've got in the box and then we'll get started. All right, so there's two things in the box here. We've got the standard rubber duck they provide, uh, which I'll just set over here. And then we got the uh, touchscreen panel itself here. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so now that we got that open, let's talk about what's in the bag itself. Obviously, we've got the touchscreen panel. Uh, we have the knob that goes on the control down here, and then we have three ribbon cables, two standard ones here, and then this one, which is um, slightly different. You've got five pins uh, on the one side, and then a slightly different pin out on the other side. You've got four and then one, and this one is a reset, I believe. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and take this panel off so we can get um, this screen out so we can start to see what we're working with, and then uh, we're going to want to go ahead and get to the main board, so we're going to take this cover off. If you haven't done this already, uh, you've got a screw on the top and then three screws on the bottom if you have an Ender 3 Pro, or if you have an Ender 3, you've just got three screws on the top. Um, then over here, uh, we just have the two screws here, and then once we get this off, we're going to have four screws holding the standard display on uh, this frame. So we're going to want to take all that apart. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is take this off. So we just got the two screws here. We'll go ahead and take that off, and then we've got the screws behind it, uh, like I was mentioning, and then we want to just go ahead and disconnect that ribbon cable as well. Then once you take these screws off, make sure you set them somewhere where you won't lose them. All right, now that that's off, we can disconnect this ribbon cable here, so we can get this off. All right, so, once we, so now that we've got that ribbon cable off, we can go ahead and take this panel off. There'll be four screws on the back here. Uh, I have two of them removed already, um, but I'll just remove the other two now. And then we got to remove this piece as well, uh, just the knob, so that the panel will slide out. So we're going to pop that off. It just slides right out. And then let's take these screws out. All right, now with those screws out, we can go ahead and just pop this piece off uh, and set this off to the side. And obviously, we're going to want to reuse this frame because uh, the new one will just mount right in place. So I'm going to go just like that. So let's go ahead and mount this really quick just so we can get it out of the way. We want to take off this peel here. Um, it's just a screen protector. So go ahead and peel that off. And then we'll slide this in place and go ahead and put the screws in. So that's in place there. Then uh, we'll put the four screws back in place. All right, now that we got the four screws back in place, uh, we can go ahead and uh, flip this over and put uh, the knob on it. It'll just slide right into place uh, like so. And then we can just set this off to the side for now. All right, next what we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and get to our main board. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this on the side, get the screws out and then adjust the camera angle. All right. So here we've got the three screws I was mentioning. I'm gonna go ahead and take those out.
and then we can just slide this out. Now if you want to, you can go ahead and remove this fan from either the frame or just go ahead and unplug it from the board or you can just kind of let it hang if it's not going to be long. Uh, I'm just going to let it hang here. All right, so now I'm going to zoom in on the board and show you what we need to do. All right, guys, depending on the board you have, you might be able to get away with just using uh, the ribbon cable that's already here for the display. If you're just wanting to um, keep the new screen in the same mode as before and not use touchscreen, that's all you need to connect. Uh, obviously, um, I'm wanting to use the touchscreen feature, which is why I got the board. Um, so we need to connect the serial cable, um, which is this black cable that I have here. I showed you guys a minute ago. Um, that's going to go on this board where it shows TFT. Uh, there's five pins. One of them is separate. That separate one is a reset. And on the SKR Mini V2, that reset pin is going to be the very left pin when looking at it from this angle. All right, so starting from the right, we'll put the four part in and just slide that into place. With all of the lettering down. And then we'll put the one part in with the lettering down right next to it. So with those five cables, um, you should be able to now connect the board if you wanted to just do a quick test. So you would just use that pin out that we have here, connect the serial cable to the RS-232 pin on the display. And then the ribbon cable that was already ran to uh, the AXP3 on the display. And if we give it some power, we should get everything to power on correctly and look normal. So let's make sure that we're good before we actually start uh, running the wires and closing things up. Now, if you are running, or if, if you are gonna test it this way with everything opened up, um, make sure that you're not touching any of the components. Um, that can end quite badly. All right, you can somewhat see here, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see the display came up here uh, and it shows ready, so we're good to go. Um, if we hold down the control dial, we should get the choice to go between touch screen and Marlin mode. Uh, so we'll go back into touch screen mode. Uh, so that shows me everything is connected right. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this back off. Right, and I'm going to disconnect the board again here. Um, next thing we want to do is we're going to want to run this cable along the same path as the ribbon cable. Uh, so I'll just run it out the back here. Uh, sorry, I'll just so I'll just run it straight through here along the other side, uh, just so it's next to a little tray I have. Right, once that's ran, I'm going to push my tray back in, and I can go ahead and close everything back up. All right, so that's for the V2. If you have, I think the V1.2 has two of the EXP ports on it. That's where you would have to use both of the ribbon cables that were provided. And then it would go from um, EXP1 to 3 and 2 to 2. Um, so it's kind of difficult to show you guys that because I don't have that board. But if you have two of the EXP um, ports on the board, then you're gonna to have to run both of them. So it really just depends on the board you have. Here, just to kind of share an example, I wanna grab the original board I took out of this. Um, the display is supposed to be able to work with the original board too, at least in Marlin mode. You won't be able to get the touchscreen mode, at least I don't believe so, because it doesn't have the serial connector. Um, but if the board you're using has two, um, connectors like this, then you're going to have to use both of them. If it only has the one like the SKR Mini uh, V2, then you only have to use the one and that'll go straight to the EXP3. All right, so now let's go ahead and close it back up. And I hate trying to put these screws on at these angles, um, but with the recording, I kind of need to. All right, there's that one. Now that those are in, we can go to flip the printer back over 
and I will change the camera angle and then we'll connect the display. All right, sorry about the mess over here to the right. I just have a lot of my parts just laying around right now. Um, but I wanted to give you a good um, image of what I'm doing here. So we should have these two cables, the original ribbon cable and then the serial cable. Uh, the ribbon cable is gonna connect to EXP3. The serial cable is gonna connect to this RS-232 port. So we're gonna connect those up. And that's really all there is to it. Now we will go ahead and remount this. So we just gotta grab our screws again. All right, now that we've got those started, we'll go ahead and make sure they're in there good and tight. And that the screen's straight. All right, now I'm gonna zoom in on the screen. We'll go ahead and power it up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I had to play with the lights a little bit just to kind of uh, get a good angle and um, I guess capture of the screen. But now let's go ahead and power it up and show what it looks like. Uh, right now, it's booting into the touch screen mode. It's gonna show no printer attached until the serial uh, port actually connects. Uh, if it's the first time powering it on, you're probably gonna go straight into Marlin mode. Uh, you can go between the two by just holding down the button for like 10 seconds, then it will show you uh, both modes here. So if I wanted to go over to Marlin, it would be the standard mode that we were used to looking at before. Um, the color is a little bit different just because the display is different and it says SD initiate fail because um, I don't have an SD card in right now. Um, but basically everything is going to be the same as it was before here. Um, anything that you had in the firmware before would show up here just in the normal way. Um, but I'm going to go back over to touch screen. So if you just hold this down again and then just go over to touch mode. And then it's going to boot back over into touch mode. And then you can get to your menu here. It shows everything that you have on the other screen, just slightly different. I would recommend spending a little bit of time kind of going over the menu items and everything like that. There are things here that weren't there before, like the G-code uh, section, um, and then some other smaller things. But outside of that, everything would pretty much behave uh, the same. You just now have the touch screen mode. Um, then I have had people say that they had issues with it not displaying the temperatures right. Uh, so far, I haven't had that issue, um, but if I do, I'll let you guys know. And then, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'll do another video showing you how to actually upgrade the firmware on the TFT35. Um, you might want to do that on occasion just to get some new updates that they might be putting out. Um, but more importantly for any bug fixes that they would be doing or releasing. Uh, so if you start running into issues, the first thing I would do is upgrade the firmware. Um, but I'll do that video next week. It's not a difficult process, but I don't, I'm trying to keep these videos somewhat reasonable in size. Um, to do everything end to end, it'll probably be another 45 minute video again. And um, I think it makes more sense splitting it up into two. If you guys feel differently, please let me know. If you think one makes more sense, um, I'm fine with that as well. But with two, I'll just link to the other one in the description, then you can jump over there if needed. All right guys, so that was the process to install the touch panel. Uh, I would say the hardest thing was making sure that you get the uh, pinouts right on that serial cable. If they are wrong, uh, I did it wrong just to see what it looked like. Um, I had a couple lines to the screen and it kind of behaved weird. So I just switched those around and it was okay. Um, if you're not going to use the touch screen mode or feature, uh, then you only need the original serial cable. Uh, but if you are going to want to be able to switch back and forth between uh, both the touch screen and Marlin mode, uh, you want the serial cable and the um, ribbon cable. So like I mentioned earlier, this was the process for the SKR Mini V2. And you can also run this on the stock board. Um, you're just going to lose the touch mode. So if you're wanting to upgrade, this, upgrade the screen first and then get that, uh, that's always an option. Um, I do recommend buying them together if you can get them in a bundle. Uh, it's slightly cheaper if you can get the bundle. Uh, it's not much of a difference if you are purchasing them separately, uh, but if you can save a couple bucks, to me it makes the most sense. I'll link to both the bundle and the individual parts below. 
Um, but if you run into any issues or have questions regarding some of the other boards, if you're running the SKR Mini 1.2 or something like that, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Uh, I only have the Mini uh, V2, so I will be limited on some of the things I can do, but I'll try to point in the right direction. And if I have too many people uh, asking about it, I might end up just buying the 1.2 and kind of showing you guys. All right, but that's all i got for now. Next week, I'll have the uh, video on how to update the firmware on the uh, touchscreen or the TFT35. Um, but if you have questions before then, I can try to help you out. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks.